Hallelujah today. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a big battle that takes place in Christian between the flesh and the spirit. And uh, we were listening to this um, open windows that we get every day, devotional. And it's just like, you know, we've been getting some um, emails about things concerning the flesh versus the spirit. Right. And uh, this scripture, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary the one to the other. That's Galatians 5.17. Right. And what really struck me about this devotional <laughs> is that when we're living in the world and we're not even a Christian, we don't have that struggle. Right. We don't have the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Because we're walking totally by the flesh. Totally by the flesh. So we don't have that struggle within us. Right. We don't have that warfare taking place between the flesh and the spirit. The, the, the spirit and the flesh are not battling each other in the life of a non-believer. Right. Okay. Because they don't even have a new spirit. No. Okay. But when does the battle ensue? Right. When the Holy Spirit comes in to a new believer. I and believe. that person repents of their sin. They believe the gospel. They repent of their sin. Right. They're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Right. And then what? The conflict begins, doesn't it? Right. Between the flesh and the Spirit. Praise Before, God. they never realized they had that kind of a right. conflict. They didn't know that they had flesh and Spirit. They didn't know that there was going to be this battle when they became a Christian. Because they're not teaching them in the church that there's going to be a battle ensue within the believer. Okay? And you want me to read that first paragraph, or you want to read it? Okay. These two are in age-long conflict, talking about the flesh and the spirit, in antagonism. It is ever so. When you have a fresh experience of the Holy Spirit, the next thing you find is that you are in a new conflict against the old flesh life in yourself. It's this kind of expanding. Right, right, okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. You know, I tell you what, you know, you have people here that are saying, um, you know, you're just perfect and you just we've heard people say, I don't have any struggle with the flesh. Well then I'm gonna have to question if you have the Holy Spirit. Right. Because the Bible tells us clear up to the end. We are going to have the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Amen. Amen. And it tells us if we don't walk by the spirit, then we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. Which leads to what? Death. Death. Right. See, the Lord Spiritual gives us, death and, and all sorts of death. Right. Physical death. Amen. Right. The Lord gives us all these things in the scripture for our admonition, for our instruction, right. to show us the way. Praise God. Preach it. You know, and and people are just coming into being a Christian, and then boom, they, they all of a sudden have this struggle. You know, here we go with this struggle. Uh, you know, these things that I did before are trying to pull me back in, you know, to do them. And the Spirit is saying no. And the flesh is saying yes. And the Spirit is saying no. And here we go. And so how, what do you do? You cry out to the Lord. What do you do? The thing that you do is fall on your knees before a holy God. Amen. First of all, we cannot do it in and of ourselves. We do. We can't. But the Spirit of God in us gives us the power. Right. If we yield to the Spirit. If we yield Amen. to turn away Amen. from what the devil's trying to pull us into or get us turned off the way or, or getting us into an attitude or or being in anger and sin, or whatever it is. Right. God gives us the power. Amen. Amen. Okay, this rising up of the flesh with, within is provoked by the devil because he sees the inheritance in view. For when the Spirit comes, the inheritance comes into view. He has come to bring to the inheritance. 
Okay? So the devil the Lord, sees the Lord, you. Yes. Yeah, th that's right. The Spirit has come to bring into the inheritance. The inheritance is Christ. Okay? So when you're walking in the Spirit, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're a brand new Christian, you're born anew from above by the will of God, not by your own will, but God quickened in you life. And you responded to that life because God gave you the grace to do so. And Jesus comes in and makes his abode with you. The Holy Spirit comes in. The Father is there. And, and you are a brand new creation. Hallelujah. You are brand new. Hallelujah. But there's this old nature in us. Okay. That we carry with us that has to be crucified daily. And not many people are talking about how do you crucify the flesh daily. Okay. See, how do you do it? It's, it, it comes by total submission to the Father. Okay, You submit to the Father. You take up your cross daily. You follow the Lord. You look to the Lord. You don't look at what's going on in the flesh. Don't look at that. Okay, Look at the Lord because the Lord is crucifying the flesh. You submit to God. Okay, and, and you submit to God. You resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, as that happens, I was just thinking, you know, in my own life, there's like stages that it brings you through. Stages of surrender. Right. Stages of going from glory to glory, from level to level. Hallelujah. Faith you know, to faith. Amen. Uh, faith to faith. Glory. And as you do, it's like this spiritual thing happens. You know, the Lord will create the circumstances in our life to for for our flesh to be killed. Amen. That's right. For us to die That's to right. our flesh. Hallelujah. And as he does we need to yield to that and right. say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And then there's like this this spiritual thing that takes place in us. Glory to God. Preach and it, and we're, just like, we're just like a wet noodle before God, so to speak, that we're just, we're surrendering to Him. We're saying, that's right, Lord. You know, that's right. 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 I, I see what you're Praise saying, you. Lord. And yes, you're right. And yes, I agree with you. And yes, I want this out of my life. And yes, yes I want to be brought into the fullness of of Christ. And yes, I know this is what you're after. And yes, I know I can't do it. So because so many times in my own life, starting out with the Lord and I'd say I'd sin and I'd be doing something and I couldn't stop it. Let's just give an example. You know, this is kind of touching on a personal note, but I know a lot of people out there have a problem with it and masturbation. And I couldn't stop doing it. And I would get convicted and condemned, and I would just be like, Oh, God, I can't do this. I can't quit doing this. But I want you to, to cleanse me of it. Cleanse me of it. So I kept saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do it. And then I'd keep doing it. And then I'd cry out to God, and I'd finally I just cried out so much, and I'd say, God, I cannot stop this. But I want everything... I want my life to be clean before you. I want to be purified before you. And if you don't come and do this, Lord, it's not going to get done in me. And as I cried out to God with that, and I cried out with all my heart and soul, and the Lord knew my heart, and He came in, and He delivered me Hallelujah. of it. And I know there's lots and lots of people out there, Christians, that have that same problem. And I'm going to tell you, as you cry out to God, and you cry out to Him, and you say, God, I, I can't do this in myself. I don't have it in me to do it. But I know that you can cleanse me and will cleanse me. And cry out that He will, and He will. He will do it as you cry out to Him to do it. Praise <laughs> the Lord, yeah. You know, Sharon, uh, Praise God, man. I, I'm just so thankful the Lord's touching it right now to preach this message because I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I had the same problem in my life, you know, and I didn't get free of it. I didn't get free of it. It, it was with me for something like, oh, I don't know, 27, 28 years, maybe. Long time. But when I got prayed for uh, by the right person, God delivered me. And I was totally set free. See, people are in bondage to sin. See, sin is a law. Okay? It's it's a law. It's like gravity. I mean, it just it's a law. And it's in the flesh. Okay? It's in the flesh of a person. Alright? That law is there. It's present with them. Okay? It has to be killed, and it's only killed by going to the cross. Go to the 
cross. You surrender. You say, Lord, I take up my cross. You keep crying out, like Sharon was saying. You cry out with your heart, with a heart cry. And God hears, okay? But it's a bondage until you're free, see? Now, if I take you, if I go to your house and grab a hold of you, and pull your arms behind your back, and tie you up, okay, with rope, you know, real strong hemp rope, and just tie you up, and then take you downstairs into your cellar, and throw you in, and lock the door and leave you down in that cellar you are in bondage okay you are down there in bondage and that's what it is okay see but only Christ can come and unlock okay the door and come in and free you see out of that bondage only Christ you can't do anything you're tied up you can't get out it's only Christ that sets free from sin Amen. it's only Christ that gives the power to not sin to resist the devil Amen. okay and watch him watch him flee from you see you submit to God, resist the devil, and watch the devil flee seven ways. Only Jesus can do it. He's the only one that's done it and can do it. You can't do it yourself. You might use all your flesh power, all your willpower of the old nature to never sin. Okay? But when you stand before the judge, you're going to stand there with a puffed out neck from here to New York City. Okay? That you did it. And he's, he's going to say, I never knew you. Okay? Because you're not depending upon the Lord. You're depending upon yourself. You have to repent. You have to repent. You have to say, Lord, it's you. You are my righteousness. You are my wisdom. You are my sanctification. You are my sanctifier. Okay? See, His Word is truth. It sanctifies us. Okay? You stay in the Word and you get more sanctified. Paul said, renew the mind. Romans 12.1. See? We offer our bodies a living sacrifice daily. See? If you're a sacrifice, you're not doing what you want to do. You're doing what the Father says to do. By the word of the Lord, by the scripture, and by the spirit of God within you. You're led forth by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one of the key things is honesty before God. Amen. I mean, are we honest before God, okay? This is one thing, you know, the Lord, He really taught me starting out is honesty before Him. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to be honest with God about what is going on in your life, about the sins that you are committing, that you can't stop committing. You have to be honest with God. You know, there's a lot of people that, that have trouble with lying. And that is one of the Ten Commandments. Right. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And... You know, we have even seen uh, over the years that so many Christians lie, tell half-truths, don't tell the whole truth. That's a lie. Whichever way you want to look at it, it's still a lie. It's still breaking the law of God. You know, we have to be honest with ourselves. You know, let the Lord, the only way that we're going to be cleansed Hallelujah. is to be honest with our God before Him and in His presence and let His Spirit bathe us. And I tell you what, in the true presence of God, you're not going to have a puffed up neck. You're not going to have a big prideful uh, I this and I that. Not before the true God, you're not. Mm -hmm. Not before the true presence of God, you're not. You're going to go down on your face. You're going to be on your face before a holy God. Right. And in that presence of the one and true holy God, He will reveal any sin that there is in our life. He'll show us our hearts. Search me, O God, and try me, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Hallelujah. That needs to be the prayer of a Christian every day. Every Hallelujah. day. Hallelujah. Search me, O God. Yes. Amen. Search me. Yes. And see if there be any yes, wicked Lord. way Amen. in me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because the flesh is wicked. Right. The flesh is against God. Every step of the way right. is against God. Right. But there is this conflict between the flesh and the spirit. Right. And in the in the scriptures in Galatians it says, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Right. I was having this struggle between the flesh and the right. and the spirit. I couldn't do what I wanted to do, Paul right. says. Right. What does that mean? It means the struggle is so intense sometimes 
I mean, we have to continually cry out to God. Right. You know, the devil can come in with irritation and all this stuff until we're so irritated we could bite an L in half. And I've been there. John's been there. The thing to do when those things happen is submit right now to God on our knees. Submit to Him. Right. Resist the devil. Hallelujah. See, if we don't submit to God first and foremost, we're not going to have the power to resist That's right. the devil. Amen. And he is definitely not going right. to flee from us. Right. But we don't submit to God, okay, of our own, okay, accord. I'm going to just submit to God today. You know? See, it's, it's a gift from God. God gives the gift of grace to his people. Grace through faith. Then we are saved. See, we're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But we're saved unto good works. Okay? Those good works follow, see? Hallelujah. Those good works that God prepared for us from the foundation of the world. God gets all the credit. Okay? No person is ever going to stand before God and take credit for anything. Okay? You don't get any credit. And if you say you have no sin, okay, you deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. Okay? You, the truth is not in you. You see? That's what the Word of God says. So if you don't have the truth in you, then you have lies. And if you have lies in you, then you're of your father the devil. Okay? And you have to repent. You have to look to the Lord. You have to say, Lord, is this true? Well, the Word of God is true. The Scripture is true. You can't throw out Paul's epistles. You can't throw out John's epistles. Okay? You just can't do it. you got to follow the whole thing from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. Okay? Another one is covetousness. Let's talk about that. Covetousness is an inordinate desire. Coveting something that does not belong to you. Okay? Something that's evil. Something that's wicked. That's what lust See? is. Yeah, lust. is coveting. Coveting. Okay? So, there's ten commandments. And the tenth commandment is thou shalt not covet. You have to break number ten before you break any of the other nine. You break number ten first. Every single time. <laughs> well, you say, wait a minute. It's... It says, Thou shalt not take the Lord, name of the Lord thy God in vain. Well, when you lift yourself up over the Lord, you have coveted, see, His authority. You've coveted His way, His standing, who He is, like the devil did, okay, in Isaiah chapter 14 where it's recorded. Okay, I will, I will, I will, I will, five times. Alright? So you've coveted something that doesn't belong to you. See, the only way we have the authority of Jesus is if we, what? Do it Jesus' way. Surrender. Hallelujah. Lay it down. Lay down your way, your will, and say, Lord, your will, your will, your will was what I want, Lord. But you got to come kill this flesh in me, Lord. you got to kill this flesh in me. See? And then you think, oh, it's all done, praise God, you know, and you're, you're making it. You, you tackled anger, you know. You're delivered from anger, from being an angry person and always blowing up at your spouse or blowing up at, at the boss. Okay? And, and then... Ah, oh, praise God. So you think, well, you got you got freedom now. See, you're free now. But you still got maybe a problem with lust. Okay? Or you still got a problem with glut. Or you still got a problem with pride. See, you're all puffed up and with pride that you've delivered from anger. See, see there, God wants to take all the seven hills. He wants to take them all down. Crush He's them. going to. See, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. You know, uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, the Lord gave us the Ten Commandments. For instruction to keep us in line, okay, and he knew what was in the flesh, all right, he knew there was this thing between the flesh and the spirit, and he gave us the Ten Commandments and the Word of God to give us instruction, Amen. to, you know, it says, basically, I showed you through these Ten Commandments that you're sinning. So now that I've come to you and you know that you're sinning, you don't got no excuse, basically. That's what it is. Right, right. And so... Um, the only way to get freedom is Christ. The right. sacrifice of Christ. You can't get it by keeping the law. You don't Amen. get it. You don't Amen. get freedom by keeping the law. You get freedom by being in Christ. I want to read um, the other part of this little devotion. It's really very good. And it is only when you have received the Holy Spirit that you know the conflict of the flesh. And what is the withstanding of the flesh? Do you know that conflict? Those who have not the Spirit have no such conflict 
of flesh. Of flesh and spirit. They are not in that realm, but holy in the flesh realm. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has come in relation to the end, and the end is the inheritance in Christ. Hallelujah. Fullness in Christ. That's Hallelujah. what he's after. Fullness. Amen. Fullness. He's going to bring us into his flesh. Hallelujah. And flesh, which is moved by Satan, rises up to frustrate that end. He doesn't want us to make it to the end. The flesh nor the devil. And to rob you of the inheritance, to rob us of, of entering into that fullness, to the inheritance of our Father. The peril is that having begun in the Spirit, listen very closely to this, the peril is that having begun in the Spirit, you might turn aside to make some compromise with Amalek. With Amalek. Now what does Amalek represent? The flesh. The flesh. Because of the hardness of the way. Oh. Right. Oh. Right. How many times? Well, our example, how many times? Example. Example. Because see, Amalek represents the world and the flesh and the devil. Okay. And God called us to a faith walk where we depend solely upon Him. But there have been times when I was ready and willing to compromise. I remember one time we needed tires for our truck, so I went and asked this man if he had any work for me to do because he, need, he needed he had a bunch of furniture that he needed done uh, glued up and stuff was all bad in repair and I knew they had the finances to pay and we needed three hundred dollars at the time and he he said he would talk to his wife but then he didn't give me the work you know and so it was like I felt kind of bad about that but the man did give us the three hundred dollars God provided what we needed see God was keeping me protected many times I have uh, tried to go find work or or thought about going out and working a regular job again when God told me not to okay that's the flesh see that's the flesh it wants to make the way see I'm compromising with the flesh because the way is hard see I, I might turn aside see having begun in the spirit you might turn aside to make some compromise with Amalek see so I'm thinking well I just got to help God just a little bit okay and God says no no so so the Spirit now, after growing more and more by walking by faith, I'm able to, to know that's the flesh. That's the devil. Okay, And I resist that. See, I submit to God. Lord, you said you would provide. I submit to you. I'm going outside to cut some wood. Hallelujah. See, you And know, that's what I do. Praise I God. I want to give an example, too. Um, <coughs> the Lord called us, you know, just almost 14 years ago. And he's had us over the years do different things. But the last six years, he has sent us out on this real, more so of a faith walk than we had ever been on before. And he told us to just depend on him for what we had need of, depend on him for any work or anything else that he would bring us. Praise God. What we needed Amen. even in the work. And he does that. And an example of that was the other day, you know, when the Lord uh, sent us out, he, he showed us not to, just to do as unto Him, not even thinking about receiving any money for what we did. Just help people, as He told us to help people. And... I told John the other day, I said, you know, I feel like we've kind of got away from that because of the way people have done us, have done us because right. there's been such a deep uh, knife wound because of things that have happened over the last six years. And we've had to constantly be before the Lord that there be no bitterness or unforgiveness because of the quote-unquote body of Christ um, that does those things. Well, the other day, we had the opportunity to go help a fellow believer, an older man. And I told John, I said, you know, we need to get back to where God had us when we first started out. Well, I woke and up in the morning. I, I was in the flesh. I woke up in the morning in the flesh. And it's just, I was just in the flesh, you know, because I was, I was remembering how people had treated us in the past. And. You know, because people say they don't have this, they they can't do anything, and they're they, they're lying to you. See, and that's what she was talking about earlier, liars. You know, liars in the body of Christ, and and so I started getting in the flesh, and I started 
judging this person. We were going to go over and help them out. You know, I was judging them before we even left the house. You know, and and boy, the Holy Spirit smote my heart. You know, he smote me, and I had I was sitting outside, and he smote my heart, and I repented, and I said, Father, I submit to you. I spoke it out. Father, I submit to you. I resist you, Satan. You get away from me in Jesus' name. Get away from me. And I did that two, three times, and and I just prayed, and I felt the peace of God just come over me and flood my soul, and and uh, we went and did the work. Praise God, and it was wonderful. You know, we had a great time of fellowship, and we and did it did without the work any thought of getting of anything, receiving. just doing it as unto the yeah. Lord. You know. And do you know God really met us on that? I mean, the man just. Uh, handed John a hundred dollar bill. He, I was just like, whoa. Yeah. Because, see, that's what the Lord does. And, you know, sometimes when things happen to us over time and, and quote-unquote, Christians are the ones that do it. Right. They're the ones that bring the hurt and the pain. And, and they're the ones that are lying, you know, and everything. And it makes people just believe, man, if, if Christians are like this, then, hey, who wants it, you know? You know, I read a com. We read a comment on a video. This is what is really bad: that people bring a burden on people that they cannot bear. Bear. And he wrote in the comment that, you know, they. This is one of Jan's videos, and that you can stop sinning. And the guy, it it just really touched our heart. The comment because it's new, a new believer, and he was saying so. So if I have to be perfect and I've just started out and I'm just uh, I'm still struggling, I'm still struggling it's, it's that means that I'm, I'm going to hell. And he, and he said, this really sucks, man. And yeah. I'm like, Lord, Lord, how long? How long will you let these people go on doing this to your little sheep? How long will you do it? How long, Lord, how long? And I, I pray, Lord, stop. Stop them in their tracks, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Stop them in their tracks from hurting any more of your little sheep, Lord God. Let this be the day, Lord. Let this be the set time, Lord God. Let there not be you, another Lord. little sheep brought into this web. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' Crush name. In Jesus' name. Crush it. Crush it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you know, you, these little sheep. Sometimes there are cases that God just, boom, delivers from everything right from the beginning. But that is not the uh, norm. Most people are delivered in stages. Right, progressive. Progressive stages as they go on working out their salvation. Hallelujah. They are... As they yield to the Lord, you know, that's really the key. Right, As we yield to the Lord, the process can be speeded up somewhat. Amen. You know, and the Lord will bring, <clears throat> he'll deliver from a certain thing. Okay, well, he's not through. Because once he delivers from that certain thing, then here's this other thing he'll come up. See, the Lord is not going to give us more than we can even bear in that process. Hallelujah. Because he says that... There's things that I couldn't even tell you because you can't bear them. I, I can't show you everything in your heart, okay, the Lord says, because you wouldn't be able to bear it. It would uh, way, way be too much more for you to bear. Praise you, Lord. So I let it come in increments, right, says the Lord. Right. And I, I show it to you right. in stages. Hallelujah. And then you yield to me, and I purge it from you. Hallelujah. That's good. You you die to the flesh. Amen. It's Take up your cross. Die daily, as right. Paul said. Right. It's a daily process. Right. Sometimes it's a minute process. Sometimes it's by the second process. But it's die daily. Right. Take up your cross. Whatever cross the Lord has us carrying. Praise the Lord. Take it up. Follow me, says Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, in the rest of this it says, The peril is that having begun in the Spirit, you might turn aside to make some compromise. Right, with Amalek. With Amalek. Because of the hardness of the way. The greatness of the cost. There's a cost, y'all. Yeah. There's a cost. Right. To following the Lord. Right. And it's all. Right. John's got to go. Sharon's got to go. we got to get out of the way. I don't know. 
the greatness of the cost by reason of the conflict and forgetting God's word utterly destroy Amalek. Amalek. Walk not after the flesh, but, but after, after the, the spirit. spirit. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. If you walk after the spirit, see. Something the, we have to die to. The, the flesh is at enmity with God. It's an enemy of God. In James four one. I'll pull this up and read this. Because James four one, <clears throat> and we'll just kind of look at this here. James chapter four. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts? that war in your members you lust and have not you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain you fight in war yet you have not because you ask not you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you might may consume it upon your lust and James is talking to Christians here to believers ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. See? So if you're a friend of the world and you believe false gospel, like the world does, they believe in the new age and all, oh, you can make yourself better and all this other stuff and you can do it by yourself. See, you're God's enemy. You're, you're following your own way, your own vainly puffed up mind. And you're God's enemy. You're not in right standing with God when you believe a false gospel, okay, a false Jesus, all right? You're not God's. You're not God's friend at all. You're His enemy. Okay. Uh, when you're walking the true walk, see the true walk is God says, "Hey, you know, I have blotted out your transgressions for mine own sake," says the Lord, not for your sake, for mine own sake. God says, "You want to bring it to my remembrance? Come on. You see, you want to stand before me and say you're righteous and holy." God says, "Your righteousness is like a menstrual cloth." Okay. See. Your righteousness is like filthy rags. That's what the Lord says. God says He does it. Malachi chapter 7, excuse me, Micah chapter 7, the Lord says, I will subdue your iniquities, hallelujah, and your sins I will remember no more. God does the work. See? God does the work. What is our responsibility then? To say, do the work, or do the work, do the work. Cry out to Him. Yes. That's submitting. Submit. Amen. And you cry out, and God does the work. How does He do it? He puts you in the school of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He brings trial. He brings uh, all these different uh, things to bear upon you, you know, in order to bring you to that place of surrender. Yeah. It's His goodness to you. People say, oh, if you're struggling, if you're fighting, if you're battling, if you're going through all this, then you're, you're in the wrong with God. You're not right with God. That's yeah. bull crap. Okay? If you're not, you're not right with God. That's right. If That's you're not the going Bible through says. the battle, then you're yeah. not right with God. Amen. See? If you don't experience the war and the warfare, and I'm not saying it's okay to sin, it's not. Mm -hmm. See? Because if you sin, you bring death upon yourself. Right. You bring death into your family. You bring death to your, to your spouse. See? It affects everything around you. It affects your work, everything. You don't want to sin. See? Mm -hmm. But there's a battle raging. That, that flesh is so strong because you haven't got dominion over. You haven't learned. The Lord hasn't taught you. See? And Sharon and I, in this ministry, see, we believe the Holy Scripture from, from front to back. 66 books, the whole thing. We know it is the greatest tool we have with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and the blood of the Lamb, see, because the Word and the Spirit and the blood are one, see, hallelujah, to defeat the works of darkness. Not the works of darkness out in the world, the works of darkness that, that are in the flesh. See, crush them. You crush them. See? You stay in the Word and study and seek the Lord. See? And you look to Jesus. The Bible says, Mortify therefore your in your members. All those things it mentions in, in uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3. But first you've got to look to Christ. You've got to know that you're risen with Him in new resurrection life. You're in with Christ. You're looking at Christ at the Father's right hand. You're not setting your affection on things down here on the earth, but things above. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know what? That's what, you know, so many people look on the outward Praise They're God. so concerned about what they can see. And you know, was the Lord ever? No, He wasn't. He always, when He was talking, He was talking about the spiritual realm. Amen. Things in the spiritual realm. Amen. You know, He told the Pharisees. Let me go over that. Go ahead. Keep talking. He told the Pharisees, you know, the outside of your cup is clean. Yeah, it is. What you can see of it. 
But he said the inside of your cup is what? Full of dead men's bones. You are dead inside. You've got no life. No life. And, you know, the Lord was always doing that with the Pharisees. He gives grace to who? The humble. And who does he resist? The proud. Who's God? Prideful and puffed up in yourself. God's resisting you. He's not, re he's not receiving you and, and pulling you unto himself. He's resisting you according to the word of God, you prideful man or woman. He's resisting you. You need, we need to be humble before Him. He said, humble yourself and pray. Get before the Lord and just cry out to Him with all you have. Be honest with Him. Don't try to hold anything back from Him because He knows it all anyway. He knows our heart anyway. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we, we talk about, you know, Sharon was just talking about all the things outwardly, you know, outwardly that that people see, they point their finger on, they stick their finger on, you know, ah, you're wicked, you know, you're vile. And uh, and the Lord says here in, in Mark chapter 7, uh, He says, um, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. It's not what goes okay? in. It's in. Those things are in the flesh. Okay. Those things are in the flesh. Adulteries would be like you're worshiping something other than the true and living God. You're committing adultery in the spirit, okay, against the living God. You're worshiping something else, like your car. You know, we know this one guy, he was worshiping his truck. I mean, worshiping his truck. We know another guy worshiping the TV. Or worshiping money. it. Money. Or money. <laughs> worshiping that, see? That's spiritual adultery, okay? And we also know what else adultery is. When a man sleeps with another uh, woman other than his wife, that's adultery. When men look at women, you know, just have turn their head, just looking at everything that's walking, that is adultery. See, out of the heart. But see, how many people, you men out there, okay, and even you women who are mm -hmm. lusting, okay, yeah. you know, people don't see you doing that. God sees you. Yes, he does. God knows the heart. Yes, see? He does. So you can get delivered. Mm -hmm. God can set you free. But you have to cry out for deliverance, see? You have to cry out for deliverance. Because I had that problem for years and years and years and years and years. Plus, looking after every, looking at it. But see, until I faced the fact that it was a problem, and it was sin in God's eyes, I didn't even begin to cry out for deliverance. But when I began to cry out for deliverance, then over a process of time, I got deliverance. Hallelujah. God brought it to me. Praise God. He gave it to me. God does the delivering, not us. We can't do it. Because it's not in us. In the flesh will no good thing. Anything that we do, it's done because of the Holy One who lives within inside of us. Hallelujah. Praise, the Praise Lord. God. You know, um, just the other day I was talking to a man, and this is just an example of how Christians uh, have a mindset in this time that we're in right now. And, and he was saying, well, I could tell them that um, I want to go up there um, on that land and cut wood. He was trying to find out some things, and he said, "Well, I could just tell him I could go up there on that land and cut wood." And I said, "Well, uh, yeah, that's all and well, okay, if you actually do go cut the wood <laughs> that you tell him you're going to do." You know, that's another story about lying. Or, you know, he said, "Well, you don't have to tell everything you know." Well, hey, God knows everything. That's right. You know, people have a problem with someone that is open open and honest and blunt bluntly honest hallelujah boldness and you know none of this stuff is going to fly with the lord none of it 
You know, you can have things in your heart of deceit. You can be lusting after someone else's husband or someone else's wife. You can uh, be walking with your own wife in a store and then turn around and look at the backside of a woman. But you're okay, right? No. Glance at a dirty magazine. But you're okay, right? No. You know what you just did? Adultery. You just committed adultery. You just broke the law of God. Hallelujah. Oh, but that's not... Oh, yes. Yeah, it's very it much. Jesus, yes, he expounded on the law. He, he, he made it a little more intense, okay? The, the law says, thou shalt not, not, not kill. Thou shalt commit no murder, okay? That's premeditated murder. But Jesus took it a step further and said, if you hate your brother, if you hate somebody, you have murder in your heart. You've just murdered them. And so people hear us preaching here on YouTube sometimes, and we get loud and boisterous, and, and, and we come across sometimes as very, you know, with, with righteous indignation, because that's what we have, okay? And they say we hate people, but they're liars, because we don't hate anybody. Jesus said, love your enemies, so we love our enemies. And if, if someone's Jesus' enemies, and if they believe a false gospel, they are his enemy, and they're spreading their false gospel. Paul said they're anathema, but we still love them, see, because... They're God's enemy. They're my enemy. So Jesus said, love your enemy. So we have to love them. Okay? We have no bitterness against any of those people. God's taking care of business yes, in this earth. Okay, We saw the earthquake in uh, <clears throat> in Haiti. And you know the Lord showed me, and Sharon and I were talking about that. See, the New World Order has a machinery set up. It's all these different gears. You know, and they're one gear is turning another gear, turning another gear, and all this huge apparatus. And God's bringing His sword to eat a bear, and He takes the sword and He sticks it right on their gears. Amen. Hallelujah! And He stops them right in their tracks. Amen. See, He checks the evil just like that. Yes. See, He checks it just like that, yeah. so that the gospel can come in, mm -hmm. okay, and the grace can flood the souls of the people right down there in Haiti. Those poor people, yeah. oppressed, poor people. Now I know a lot of uppity of people in the West and Americans, you know, and we, you know, we, we kind of have this uppity attitude that we're so much better than all the people in Haiti. Let me tell you something about Americans. They're more barbarous and more filled with hell than any nation on earth. Okay? And when, when all this hell breaks loose in it's this nation, dog. you're gonna see, okay, we have been, we have experienced it with the religious crowd. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, right under the surface there, there is a demon there that will just literally reach out and kill you. If it could. If it could. But it can't. Okay? Now, God tells us to proclaim this truth. Hallelujah. The truth is, God's about to bring His sword. Bring Amen. it, Lord. Bring your sword, Lord, right now. See? And just put it right in the middle. Right in the middle of the gears Amen. of the new world. Of, of the whole world system Amen. cosmos. Amen. Amen. I hate Dear calling Lord. it the new world Dear order because Lord. it's not the new world order. It's the same order of man. Governing man. Always oppressing. See? But I'm going to tell you something. If you're not a believer, you need to become a believer. Amen. You need to become a believer today. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because we have brothers and sisters right now who are sitting in a jailhouse right now, in a prison in Iran, in Tehran. Sisters and brothers. But I'm going to tell you something. They're in prison. They're all bound up. And they're in China and in India. And there's probably some here in America. Okay? And all over the world in Colombia. But I'm going to tell you something. They're free. They're more free than you are, sir. Yeah. They're more free than you are, man. Driving your fancy cars or driving any kind of car to work and back. They're more free than you are. If you're not saved and filled with the Spirit of God, you have no freedom. See? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, if you continue in my word, see, and you continue in the word, yes. then you are my disciples indeed. Yes. Then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But Amen. if you say this word is not valid, you don't need it, Paul's epistles are not, not needed, or if you read the Bible, you're going to fail. See, you're a liar. You're a lying, stinking demon. So whose disciples okay? are you if you're putting down the right. word of God? That's right. You're the devil's disciple. Amen. See? Amen. You're following the devil. Amen. Okay? That's right. And you're doing his bidding. And you can sit back on your laurels and be all nice and sweet and talk all soft. I don't care. God sees your heart. And he sees it's wicked and filled with dead men's bones. And he sees it's filled with worms like Herod's heart was. Okay? And you're going to die and be eaten with worms if you don't repent. Alright? Hallelujah. Now is the time. Now is the time to come. Hallelujah. Right now. The time is very short. Now is the time to cry out to God. To give you a heart of repentance. Hallelujah.
cry out to him to come and dwell with you. Now's the time. Because just like that, you could go out into eternity. Just like thousands did in Haiti. That earthquake didn't even last a minute. And there were over 500,000 dead. Well, that's what they're estimating that. Not counting. Not counting. Thank you. They don't really know how many. They're estimating that many. But the fact is, thousands are going, did go out into eternity just like that. Those practicing voodoo. Those practicing witchcraft. Some of them on God's people. <coughs> God took care of it that day. Yes, Lord. No more witchcraft going forward. Praise you, Jesus. No more voodoo curses. Hallelujah. Going Thank you, Lord. God's people. Yes, Lord. We praise you and bless you for your Just work, like Sodom Thank and you, Gomorrah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, there, there's Hallelujah. a set time for the evil. Hallelujah. To be over with. Hallelujah. God has set the time. He knows yes. what it is. But yes. I'm telling you, as you saw in Haiti... Right. When the set time comes. Right. Then. Right. And there's a story there. Uh, when I first learned about the Haiti thing, was uh, we were over helping our buddy, and uh, and he told me about it. So when we got home, we flipped it up on the news, and and uh, and I read a story. And this Christian missionary couple from America were there in Haiti, and the the building fell in, man. And the guy and his kids were outside, but his wife was in there in the building, and so he he dug her out. He got her out. See, she didn't die. See, God's people will be in the midst of of the judgments that are coming. They'll they a thousand shall fall at your side. Ten. Oh, look at that. That Christian couple was there. A thousand fell at their side. Ten thousand at their right. But it did not come nigh them. Such an example. Be with the Lord in this hour. You live on the West Coast. You live in the Midwest. I mean, God's fixing to rock this yes, earth. I'm telling you, He's going to rock to the foundation. Yes. Be in His will. That's by being in the Son. You get in the Son by believing the gospel and by repenting of your sins. Repent. Believe the gospel. Repent. You know, Cry out you to God, and He will save. He'll fill you, you with His Spirit. You know that earthquake is just the beginning. Just the beginning. The Lord is going to shake this earth all over from the east coast to the west coast. God is shaking the earth. He's going to move this earth geographically. He's going to move it. And the geographical picture of this earth is not going to be the same. Our God is going to do that. I want to I want to just plead with those you know that are not the Lord's and you know they're they're giving excuses by watching other people that call themselves Christians and they tell them you know if they're like that I don't want to do that I don't want to be like that I don't want to if Christians are like that then I don't want any part of their God well I'm going to tell you that's not going to fly Judgment Day Hallelujah the Lord will not use that as an excuse for you on Judgment Day. We are all to be accountable. And right now you are accountable for you have heard the gospel. What will you do with Jesus Christ? What will you do with Him? You know, He is the best friend we could ever have. He doesn't lie. Hallelujah. He's not unfaithful. Praise you, Lord. He is always faithful. Glory to He Jesus. always does what He says Amen. He's going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He Bring brings it, Lord. us peace Bring it, Lord. in the midst of the storm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When the waves are rolling and the earth is rolling, He Hallelujah. brings us peace Praise in the midst of the Jesus. storm. In all the midst glory. of the earthquakes, in the midst of it all, all He will bring us peace. Our mind is to be stayed on Him. Come to him today. Hallelujah. And those of you that are the Lord's, let the Lord destroy any doubt in you. Come quickly. Let it be destroyed now. For doubt is deadly. It's deadly. Bring them. 
Let's just ask the Lord right now, Lord. I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just remove any and all doubt in your body, Lord Jesus. Any and all fear has to go in Jesus' name, other than a holy, reverent fear of God, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you do protect your people. You protect us, Lord. You provide for us. Hallelujah. You are the yes, Holy Lord. One. Bring it on. Command Israel. the blessing. The to Holy your One children, of Israel. Lord. He oh, will hallelujah. provide. He command will provide. Blessing, Lord, he said, children, even Lord. before you ask, command the blessing I've already answered it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Glory hey, to God. We need to shout hallelujah. that song on Praise this him, side. Lord. This side Hallelujah. of the river. Hallelujah. Of this, ri this, this side the of the river. Song, the song, the song Praise of victory. You. Hallelujah. The song of victory. Hallelujah. We have victory. He is our king. He will provide. He will put the enemy under our feet. Hallelujah. He has already done it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.